He gets really nervous when he plays me, Torres. Probably because he knows if he loses, he's going on YouTube. <laughs> he don't want that. <laughs> no one wants that. <laughs> no, I got him again. No. Hey everyone, and welcome to another video of Inside Libby P's Thoughts as she plays the StarCraft 2 ladder. This. In this game, we had the honor to go up against Pig's random, which luckily for me, he actually did get Protoss. In the beginning of this game, I did assume that he was going to cheese me because usually when Pig plays random, he does tend to be a little bit cheesier with his random than he does with just like straight up races. The game before this, I versus Zerg, in which he took the gold base instead of his natural and went for a ling all in. <laughs> He's gonna cheese me, right? Whatever you do, don't drop lord him. You can't actually on this map. It's not a drop a lordable map. Ericsson isn't invited to the party on this map. It's too far for him to travel, he said. <laughs> that was a crazy close game, actually. Uh, but he did end up destroying me anyway. But new information was divulged from that last game to this game, which was that Big was a little bit of a nervous slice of bacon in that last game. A bit scared that he would have lost to me. <laughs> Which made me feel a little bit more confident going into this game. I'm like super unlucky. Whenever I get Pig, I always get his Zerg. So I don't really versus Protoss. I didn't versus Protoss for like six months. A long time ago, I can't remember. Because I know all too much about performance anxiety and how much that actually hinders your performance. So, shake on, my nervous bacon pig. Shake on. I'm gonna give him a slice of the old friendship worm as well. Let's scout it out, boys. What's he got? DT drops? What counter is that? It's just standard plays, you know what I mean? Just standard natural Zerg plays in the current meta. <laughs> you wanna go for that lair first? You wanna get those extra gases in that roach worm and you wanna throw down the friendship worm. After, of course, I realized he wasn't doing any one base shenanigans or cannon rushes or proxies. I'm actually just gonna do a um, Nidus play. I felt like I was confident enough to throw down a little bit of a cheeky worm. Now you may be thinking, oh, the worm, that's a quick one. Easy peasy, done. Worm gets up, game is over. This game's a little different than that. Then your old typical friendship secured game over. This game actually does end up going more into the late game because Pig was really prepared for the worm. He defends it perfectly, guys. What can I tell you? It's Pig. So don't get your hopes up. He even does a really good job at denying my overlords with a stalker in the middle of the map to deny further vision of worms going down in his natural or main base. Oh, I've got too many of these guys. So I leave a couple of cheeky zerglings on his side of the map for that vision that the overlord could have potentially given me on the outside of his base. So unfortunately, I would prefer to place him in the inside of his bases. So it's more effective. But if you can't do that, then I do try and get my zerglings now. I was hoping he'd be distracted on the outside of his bases by, you know, leaving a zergling or two around his side of the map. I also morph an overseer just to secure the fact that I get vision into his main base. As soon as I get that overseer vision in his main base, I scout he's already got patrolling immortals on the high ground. And Immortals absolutely demolish Nidus Worms as they're morphing. Because Immortals just do bonus damage against armor. And as you know, Nidus have armor. So they absolutely melt worms. Poor little wormies. My poor little wormies! He's already got Immortals. I can't, I can't win this. Not with the Immortals out. So I plant the worm outside his natural, which is the best chance I've got of keeping my worm alive. And I try and poke at the front. It is hard poking from the low ground to the high ground, as you don't really exactly have the vision on the high ground, and your units kind of bug out and get clumped up, and you funneled into a choke point, and it's just really rough time. So I'm persisting on the aggression, poking at the front door of his natural. But behind this, what I'm truly trying to do is actually tech up to mutants. It's the only slither of hope I have into the mid game. If I can get my spire up, then I've got a shot. Then I've, I've got a shot, you guys. Scout that. I've taken this third base with his warp prison, and he drops his 
little hit squad of forces to deny the morphing hatchery. He's got some stalkers and an immortal, and the immortal, I tell you what, is the worst part of that hit squad because it, the immortal pounds down that hatchery quite quickly. And the successful thing that this warp prism is doing is actually making me become defensive. Instead of me being the aggressor with the nidus worms, he's got me on the back foot. He's got me defensive. I throw down a nidus network at the third base so that I can move around with my clean roach army a lot quicker and that it's a lot more mobile. But it's not done in time. I have to cancel that third hatchery. But when he gets that warp prism and he goes straight to my natural, I load up that worm and I unload back in my main base where there's creep connecting to my natural so it's much quicker to defend. But not before he picks off a good number of my drones which is quite devastating. I do manage to snipe a stalker but he picks up the remainder stalker immortal and send it back to my morphing third base. Ah what prism micro pig is too good. I'm going to have to cancel yet again my third base delaying my economy even further while trying to defend against this war prism harass. And I tell you what, Pig's Warp Prism Harass is pretty on point. He's using the division between my third and natural as a perfect harass point. Finally, I get a, a few muters out in time to just kill off this Warp Prism. He tries to recall, but I'm like, Pig, no! This Warp Prism's mine. It's done too much damage already, and I've just got to kill it. So thank God it felt good to finally kill off that Warp Prism because it did have an immortal and a stalker inside which is exactly what I needed to really carry on that ray of hope that I have of winning this game. As soon as the warp prison falls, I beeline it straight to his main base. I managed to get a stalker before his reinforcement stalkers arrive. And now I'm just trying to find a window of opportunity that I can pick up economy or even a stray unit, maybe a structure here and there. I just have to try and harass, keep him on the defense, keep him moving so that I can finally get my economy up, get my third established, and more gas income mining. I don't know what this queen is doing here on this side of the map, but it's, oh no, it's chilling. Queen's Gucci. <laughs> send, that, send that little guy home. I'm honestly just focusing all of my attention on a being Careful aggressive now, and all of my gas into meters. A Protoss player that actually opens Robo and invests a lot into Immortals they don't really have the best anti-air, which is why I'm using this to my advantage to just really mass up muters. See if I can pick up, pick off a probe or two. But now Pig is going full-fledged Phoenix production. This is where it gets a little dicey. If I don't incorporate corruptors into my unit composition, then these Phoenixes will just get way too many cost-efficient engagements. They'll just get way too many of my muters for free. I have a Ling in his third base to see when he tries to opt to take that expansion. And Creep Tumors at the other base, so it actually prevents him from taking that expansion altogether. I didn't even see he had a target. Throwing down in desperation, Nidus Network, to really scare Pig off from being aggressive with these Phoenix as well, and chasing my muters down, continuing to kill them off. I was hoping that he would back off as well from chasing my muters, because might have thought a lot of queens would have popped out of that worm, which they eventually do. I spread some more creep. And, and now I finally have a couple of Corruptors in my unit composition to really tank the damage of the Phoenixes. The great thing about having Nidus Worms at your disposal and muters harassing is that it gives you vision of their side of the map and the ability to throw down a worm wherever you please. So seeing this third base of Pig and my muters harassing it, knowing that he's got Phoenixes that are going to defend against my muters, I throw down a cheeky worm for my ground forces that Phoenix is actually don't do too well against because they have to individually pick up each one and it uses a lot of their energy and Careful. a lot of micro and a lot of attention and if you don't have enough Phoenixes then Queens actually do pretty well against Watch Phoenixes so Roach Queens comes out of the Nidus worm which almost denies the third base from Pig <laughs> it gets that Nexus very low which means that Pig probably has to invest a lot more defenses at that very injured Nexus to really prevent him from losing it. Because if he loses that Nexus, then he might be in a bad spot. <laughs> the Mutalist might just kite on in and, and pick it off if there's not enough cannons or ground units or Phoenixes in position to defend it. Big engagement here in the main base. My Muta Corruptor Force is picking off a cannon when his pretty large group of Phoenixes now arrive to defend it. My Corruptors are 
sitting right on top of these phoenixes, but they are targeting down individually my mutas, which is absolute perfect micro from pig. But this is an engagement that I've opted to commit to. Since my corruptors are actually picking off phoenixes, if I can trade out my mutas for his phoenixes while keeping my corruptor count alive, it actually makes my force stronger for the next engagement because I'll have more corruptors against his much smaller phoenix force. Behind this, I have established my three base economy while taking an additional fourth base as well. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier, guys. The Nexus was so low, and now my mutas can come in and actually just pick off that Nexus completely. He's only got a bunch of sentries and out of position stalkers close to the Nexus in order to defend. He didn't have enough static defense, so he's lost his third base Nexus, and that is so huge for me. I picked up all his sentries before his stalkers shoo my muters away. And at this point in the game, I now have full base gas so econ. On land. So much on land. Full base gas econ for a muter player is quite oh, no. decent. Ideally, you want about five to six bases, but not complaining with my four bases. Not too shabby, guys. Not too shabby. If I can just continue to pick off a couple of phoenixes or units, really just dwindle his army size, keep him defensive as well by throwing down stray nidus worms, even if I don't intend to unload anything from them. It is really nice just to have that continual threat that pig always has to be cautious of if I have a bunch of units in that worm and I just unload them in his main natural third. It's not going to be happy days for him, especially if his units are out of position. So he's forced to deal with the worms as soon as they arise. And with all of this crazy shenanigans going down, I send my Muta Corruptor Force to the main base to see if I can pick up more economy or just shut down his Phoenix production or even just dwindle his Phoenix count. I definitely want to be able to connect my Corruptors to his Phoenixes while adding the DPS of my Mutas. And I see this cheeky fourth base over here and I decide to caustic spray it down as there's no static defense or ground units to protect it. Caustic spray with this many corruptors actually kills Nexuses quite quickly. So before he's able to protect this base by getting his stalkers in position, that Nexus is dead. <laughs> it dead, guys. And I'm doing a little bit of a cheeky Zerga run by on his other third base. And this has actually got Pig a little frazzled. He's left his phoenixes out in the middle of the map, unprotected. And my corruptors come in and actually pick off a huge portion of his phoenixes. And now I think my Muta Corruptor count has become a little bit too much for Pig to deal with. Oh, I think we might be breaking him apart. We are actually doing it, guys. We're breaking Pig. Him We've got him so discombobulated. His economy is in shambles. He's desperately trying to take Nexus after Nexus, but each time we keep picking it off. And behind this, I'm going to expand again really and continue now, to right? dedicate all of the gas income I have into Muta Corruptor while finding any opportunity I can to do a Zergling run by or two. He's opted to go for more of the Archon defense now since his Phoenix count has gotten a little bit too low. But there's no shield batteries or static defense here in the main base and I've decided to do a little bit of a poke, if not just keep his units defensively in his main base while my Zerglings are doing work on his third. Oh, but Pig now has Storm at his arsenal and he is going to use it Clutch couple of storms go down on my muters, forcing my muters to back up momentarily to kind of regen a little bit. But Pig's economy is honestly down to about two base income. And with these stray Archons in his main and natural, I can just magic box them and pick them now. off quite efficiently. Even though my muters are very bruised at this point, I feel like I can actually engage his army. I think we can just like attack into him now, right? Pig, knowing that it's desperation times, decides to go for the base straight. He's waited too long defensively, and he's had enough. He's pushing across the map with his Stalker and Immortal into my natural, and he's trying to do work on my... He's trying to do work on my economy. He needs to hinder me somehow, because his economy is, is gone. His base is gone. Yeah, I think we win. <laughs> He's also even got the Dark Templars, which I didn't even see the Dark Shrine. So I am actually going to have to morph a few Overseers around the map to try and deal with this. Well, morphing some Nidus Worms around the map, because Nidus Worms, as you guys know, do counter structures. And to win the game, you do have to kill your opponent's structures, every single one of them. So if the Nidus Worm stays alive in some inconspicuous location, then that does work for me as well.
I'm also getting my overseers in position on my new expansion to try and get at least one base economy going. And I'm cost of spraying all these buildings down to really add that DPS to killing off these bases as quick as possible. In a base trade scenario, you do want to hide hatcheries around the map as well because hatcheries allow it so that you're not being revealed. Pig in this game is now being revealed because he has no nexuses left. It's definitely really good for me because I get to see where every single one of these structures are on the map. That's what being revealed is. I'm actually going to place a couple of random hatcheries at very spread locations across the map. But in doing this, I left my muters a little bit unattended. Pig was actually able to catch my muters unattended and pick off quite a number of them with these phoenixes. Muters have a shorter range than phoenixes, so you can actually kite phoenixes away from muters without even the muters being able to touch them. So, great plays here from Pig. This does get me a little worried. He's got a, a nice stalker Archon force, but I think I have more structures than him on the map. I'm trying to get my Corruptors to chase down these very pesky, pesky phoenixes, and he's found my mining expansion. Oh no! This is a bit of a yikes for me. They're definitely doing a good job. I really needed that mining base to ensure victory. But I feel like this actually might be his last structure. When I kill that pylon, that ray of hope that I was feeling before, guys, has become a beaming rainbow. Because he spread his units across the map and I feel like my army can actually just contest against his. I think this is his last structure though. He's really slowing down his attacking forces. He doesn't have enough phoenixes to contest against my corruptors. No, he doesn't have enough Archon oh, yeah. Stalker to contest One against year. my muters. Keep up the great work, B. And now it just becomes who can kill each other's structures first. So the beginning of this game was very dicey. I think he can take his army though. And then when I got my muters out and I kept denying the third base, I felt like I was in a pretty commanding position. I must have let that get to my head because during this base trade scenario, it actually is a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. It's really coming down to the last remaining structures. These Dark Templars are doing so much work on killing my hatcheries. And then finally, we found his last remaining nexus. The reason why he was no longer revealed. Um, because he's got that DT, I have to trade. I have to trade. And at this point, I've only got two remaining hatcheries, and I've just got to send everything I've got to kill this last remaining, last remaining nexus. I don't have any detection. He did such a good job at like ru destroying all my overseers. <laughs> that was a close oh one, guys. GG. That was such a good game, you guys. Holy smokes. Well played, Nervous Bacon. <laughs> well played, Big. <laughs> we can't take a game off his Zerg, but we finally took a game off his Protoss. Yes. Thanks, guys, for watching this super close base trade ZVP. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys for the next video. I really did not think we were going to take that because he defended my Nidus play perfectly. As soon as I saw he had Immortal, I just tried to transition as quickly as, t as possible to Mutalisks. I kept him defensive um, the entire game, which prevented him from being aggressive. I would have lost if he pushed out. <laughs> it was just like, attack! <laughs> Keep him on the defense! <laughs> well, I'm on top of the world!